There's only two venues for change, the government wherein the people, uh, wherein the problem lies, and the other venue is the people. And so the people now must be empowered to make laws so that they can exercise their legislative role as sovereigns parallel to the role played by representative government in making laws also. So it becomes a win-win. The people would be independent uh, and would have their own agency to permit them to uh, make, make laws, which is a complicated deliberative process, but not so complicated. The law that I've written with others, the National Initiative for Democracy, is only 5,600 words. And we've d got a device to go entirely around the government and we don't have to ask the government permission to enact this into law. Wow, okay. So um, when you hear the, the, the GOP's rhetoric on small governments and stuff, uh, you know, I'm hearing you talking about the people being empowered and the people. There's, there's a thing that seems to be going on in America, which, the, which is the dumbing down of America from Hollywood to the, the foods, to the additives, to chemtrails, uh, if you subscribe to that, um, to the EMF uh, that we're all dealing with with our cell phones and everything. So there's all this going on, and yet people need to be empowered and educated and made aware of the problem. Do you see that as something that's... Vital. In fact, I make this distinction. You can educate the people all you want. You can inform them all you want, but if they don't have the power to act upon that information, it goes nowhere. Mm -hmm. People become cynics. And they turn into their own lives and worry about their children, their families, and their jobs. And so they don't have an impact on the, the policies uh, of the polity, of the government. They don't have an impact. Or well, people take polls, but, but the operation of representative government does not function that way. First and foremost, in fact, let me give it, uh, do it this way. Let me describe to you what goes on in the mind of an elected official or a visible official or even a corporate official, uh, a person who is visible and has power. The first thing, and now what I'm talking about is human nature. This is not pejorative. The first thing that comes to mind is how does this affect the decision I'm about to make? How does this affect me? Mm -hmm. My job, can I get reelected? Can I stay in power? Uh, I've, got, uh, I've got a family to support or I've got a position. So that's the first thing. The second thing that comes into my mind before I make that decision, how does this affect the people who put the money up to get me here and to keep me here? The third thing that comes into my mind, how does this decision affect my party? Because if my party's in power, I'm in power. So now I'm at the third level and I haven't even addressed my own ideology or my possible corruption. Mm -hmm. So generically, representative government, what we have has the structural inability to deal with the public interest first. Structural inability to do that. Mm -hmm. and, and so if that being the case, which is the, what I was saying, there's only two venues for change. The government where the structure is flawed or the people and so we have to empower the people to be able to make laws and join in their governance and this brings about a maturation the representative government is designed to keep the citizens in civic uh, adolescence civic adolescence is what the structure does mm -hmm. because we give our power away and then we blame them hey george is the one that did it wrong bill did it wrong you know, and blame it all on them. I don't want to pay taxes, you know, but I want everything. That's, that's adolescent. That's, that's just look at your ch kids. You'll see that that's adolescent behavior. So now how do we mature our children to adults? We give them responsibility, more and more responsibility, and they wind up being adults, taking responsibility for their lives, taking responsibility for the society around them and the polity. So now, if we empower the people to be able to make laws, oh, they'll make some mistakes, 
but they'll learn real quick and take responsibility for their lives. So the greatest benefit of direct democracy is the maturation of the human race. <laughs> You're so inspiring, I love it.